from the time that you have been in the music uh, space, what have you learned? Oh, maybe you should be appointed a brand ambassador for some tissue company. I think it's my job to fix me. It's your job to fix you. My job to me that you you done it. Don't go. Eh, and I have no more According to the word of God, Shogoramu are not. Dimari wa no gadza madzimamba. Mhm. Poland na nasi crash yangu ndi story nayo crash nangu. Na wachi yangu. Eh but we vakan funera manje vakati mwana ngu bokura. Zvinhu zvakandi bata uri. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola 7 Owen we kwa Madondo. This is exclusive with the chief air marshal it is an honor to be joined on the show by the only female presidential candidate elizabeth uh, valerio at uh, the leader of the united zimbabwe alliance uza all the way from wanke uh, she is uh, a biochemist uh, who led attend into politics and is vowing to better the lives of zimbabweans in various aspects uh, she will be taking us through her plans when or if she wins the election it is an honor how are you uh, mrs uh, valerio I'm very well. Thanks so much for having me. I, I just have one little thing though. I heard uh -huh. you say when or if she wins. Yes. I, I'm winning this election. <laughs> <laughs> you are very very optimistic. And uh, yeah, hopefully you I mean, we are, we are here to see. We are here to see. <laughs> and to begin with, I would like to congratulate you uh, you know, uh, on the winning of your legal matter. Thank you. What was exactly you know happening? Yeah. It was a, an unfortunate um experience sadly mm -hmm. because this is of course my first um foray into politics at the presidential level and I was very much looking forward to having the opportunity to participate mm -hmm. like everyone else. Yeah. Um but on the 21st of June uh when we went into nomination court despite the fact that we had done everything correctly mm -hmm. submitted papers made payment of 20,000 US dollars mm. equivalent yeah. um the the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission mm -hmm. rejected my application. So I had to go through a court process to appeal that mm -hmm. and start essentially from from scratch for the um, what was the reason for the for the re rejection zek said that my proof of payment was rejected they mm -hmm. did not accept that i had made a bank transfer even though it was stamped by the bank mm -hmm. as having been carried out yeah. so they did not accept the payment uh, confirmation that i had submitted to them mm -hmm. uh, but do you think it was uh, deliberate look i don't want to you know my mm -hmm. my opinion in that matter doesn't count i think at this point what is important is that zek learn from what they've done mm -hmm. um, and start looking at all of the cases if you look at this election mm -hmm. this election is completely um unusual mm -hmm. it's full and riddled with uh, you know court uh, challenges mm -hmm. our own political party right now we had 30 cases mine was Whoa. just one out of 30 of all those 30 mm -hmm. mine was the only one that was successful all mm -hmm. 29 of the others which were for mp candidates yeah. have been rejected by the high court mm -hmm. so there's something happening certainly um mm -hmm. whether it's with zek wherever it is happening mm -hmm. uh, but it's this is a very unusual if if candidates want to contest they do the paperwork they make their payments they should be given the opportunity to participate in this election as of yes uh, as of friday actually yeah. a couple of days ago our vice president was removed from the ballot alongside the other 12 triple c candidates mm -hmm. he was already accepted and on the ballot and has now been removed as an mp candidate in buloyo this is not normal mm. so something is going on i don't know again who and what is behind it but there is it, this is not a democratic election but but, but i heard that uh, some you know people uh, you know they submitted their papers late so in the case of um for example our vice president mm -hmm. he was there at nine o'clock in the morning and they're being told no your paperwork was only received after 4 30 mm -hmm. the fact is other people were put ahead of him and he was told to sit on a bench outside even though he was at the court and ready to submit all of his paper in mm -hmm. the paperwork in the morning um all of our other candidates it's the same sort of story like mine mm -hmm. they submitted their paperwork it was approved and their proof of payment was rejected so are you going to system, to challenge the court? i mean to challenge the you know we did and and we've been rejected in the high court mm. the banking system delayed processing of payment in yes. my case it was 24 hours later the mm. funds reflected on the zimbabwe electoral commission side so it's it's very challenging i think part of the problem is even before we went to elections mm -hmm. there were a lot of process is put in place to make it hard for candidates to participate mm. uh, but even those who did show up are facing all sorts of difficulties mm -hmm. it's very disappointing yeah and how does it make you feel you know knowing that uh, you're the only female uh, only presidential female candidate on the list 
It's a lot of responsibility, to be honest. I'm mm. the only woman essentially representing women in Zimbabwe mm. on this ballot as a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I do hope that I'm excited about it. I, I do hope that I can inspire other women to realize that they, it's possible to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't be the first and only woman in the future elections, right? There should be many on the next election. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. I feel very lonely. I saw that my only sister, you know, Linda was trying Linda, to get onto yeah. yes, and she didn't make it on Friday. Mm. So this is disappointing. I feel like um, at the end of the day, uh, women need to work together to mm -hmm. make sure this changes, that we have more women in politics, more women in government. Mm -hmm. And it starts with this election. Women need to stand behind each other. But I think also uh, it's inspiring and exciting because mm. for the first time we have a different candidate um, <laughs> who comes with a very different political party yeah. and so Zimbabweans should be looking at this closely and saying now we can actually change Zimbabwe as we've all been saying we want to. Yeah, I understand the history is repeating itself. Clearly, evident by you given you know that uh, your mother is the first um, woman in history you know to challenge the power uh, of an African president mm. having her own party is that right? She was the first woman to form a political party in Africa and in Zimbabwe. She challenged Robert Mugabe. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think Zimbabwe, like you've been called to serve. Yeah. It's in my genes. It's in my blood. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it at the time. Growing up, I thought <laughs> I was going to be, like you said, a scientist yeah. with yeah. a very different career path. But here I am. Mm -hmm. I was already chosen. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you were born a leader. <laughs> yes. So, yes. initially, the reason why you joined politics uh, was because of the child uh, in courts. Uh, Chinese occupation of our land. Uh, as you stated in an interview you did with uh, Trevor, uh, what exactly are the Chinese doing and uh, um, are they the only ones, uh, you know, occupying our land? So it's not really about one country or mm -hmm. a certain people. It just so happens in our region, in Wange, where I live, mm -hmm. it was the Chinese that came in and wanted to exploit our national park mm -hmm. for coal. And yet they are immense enormous deposits of, of coal mm -hmm. you know we've got our colliery they should have been the ones to be capacitated yeah. from the very beginning <laughs> to do what is being done by these foreign nations so the the very fact that they wanted to come into Wange National Park to mine for coal um, didn't add up because we've got tourism heavily reliant on Wange's tourism facilities mm -hmm. we've got people that have invested their businesses their livelihoods their jobs at stake and so we, we did as a community rally behind this appeal to President Munangagwa to say, you cannot be mining for coal in the national park. Fortunately, they listened to that appeal. Mm -hmm. But we then, um, I was being you know, contacted by people all over Zimbabwe mm -hmm. saying, while we are Kuelu, we are people coming in telling us we need to rem move away from our ancestral sites. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can imagine, these are Zimbabwean people. And we are being told to make way for foreigners to come in and take our resources. Mm. I have today people in our party, Uza, who are saying to me, I'm watching people exploiting minerals right now in front of me and I'm benefiting nothing from this. And yet that is where I grew up. Mm. This is my space. I don't understand how this adds up. So for me, in my mind, I started to think about, you know, future generations. Yeah. If this is happening and it's happening rapidly throughout our country, there is a, an intense focus on extraction right now. And these resources are not going to the benefit of the majority. Mm -hmm. I don't see it translating into <laughs> our hospital systems, our clinics, our schools, nothing. Mm -hmm. So tell me, if this rate continues to escalate and there are other uh, countries also coming to the table mm -hmm. with the same intention, because now Zimbabwe is really opening up avenues for for, you know, you, if you bring a helicopter, you can now mine for whatever you want in yeah. Zimbabwe, right? If this continues for five more years, they'll look at us and they'll say, go, 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 magaite, during the, that time when you were watching these people do yeah, this. Yeah. You know, it's not okay. And in my view, we as Zimbabweans have a responsibility to protect our land, mm -hmm. our resources. Yes, as a, as a political, responsible political party, we want to engage the international community. But let's do that in a manner that's responsible, that is putting the citizens of Zimbabwe first. So as Uza, we say we are reclaiming Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans. We are taking back our country through the people, for the people. You are taking it back from who? Those that are exploiting our nation. <laughs> I think it's not even anything that you, you go out onto the street and speak to anyone. Yeah. Who is benefiting from our country? Uh, there are people treating it as if it's their personal property. Hmm. Zimbabwe is not for everyone anymore. 
And yet people fought and died to create a space for every Zimbabwean. Mm. So I think as we go to elections, the, the message really should be take your vote seriously. Mm. Realize you have, a, you, have a, 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 you have a strength and an ability to choose who drives forward our nation. Had it not been uh, the Chinese uh, stepping on our toes, like I said, uh, would you have uh, pursued politics? I had no intention of pursuing politics. Mm -hmm. That was never something I thought of. Um, mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to do something to serve our nation. And mm -hmm. I've always done that from, from when I was young. I, yeah. mean, I, I get involved in a lot of programs and mm -hmm. projects to try to elevate and uplift our, con our country and our continent. Mm -hmm. It's within me to, to, to lead and support the development of our continent. But I thought it would be in other ways science education, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> enterprise. I'm a very enterprising person. I want mm -hmm. to see more, um, you know, revival of our industrial sector, which yeah. we've lost over the last decades. Mm. Um, so I thought it would be in a different role, but not politics. I never <laughs> even imagined it. Uh, so some people say, oh, she's coming into politics because she has an agenda. She mm -hmm. wants this. She wants that. Yeah. I have absolutely nothing in my life that I'm missing. I have mm -hmm. everything I could ever want. Properties, mm -hmm. cars, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I am doing this because it's the right thing to do for Zimbabwe. And more Zimbabweans need to step up. Mm. Women, men, youth, we all need to step up and realize that we have a responsibility, a role to play. Some won't be in politics. Mm -hmm. We understand that. It's not for everyone. And I understand uh, that, uh, you know, your party has been running for two years now. Yes. Uh, at what point did you, I mean, decide to contest in the presidential uh, elections? It was from day one. Mm -hmm. So when we sat, it was actually a group of strangers that came together and we decided <laughs> to form this party mm -hmm. because everyone sitting around the table said, there are too many, we mm -hmm. need to fix them. And the only way to do it is by forming a new government. Mm -hmm. So we sat around a table and they, they elected me president mm -hmm. with the intent that we need a new government for Zimbabwe. I was to lead as mm -hmm. president of this new government. Okay. Now, and uh, what is your manifesto? Well, we've um, spent the last two years, as you said, um, going through all constituencies, meeting the citizens. It's a citizens-based manifesto, mm -hmm. asking them, what is it you want? And what we've come up with is a four-part manifesto. Uh, the first part essentially focuses on accountability. Mm -hmm. We need to restore accountability in Zimbabwe. When you think of the rule of law, the very fact that we're sitting here debating whether or not you know, the electoral system has been treated fairly, mm. it's because of... The, the lack of confidence in rule of law in Zimbabwe. So we need to separate powers within Zimbabwe. The, the, the government politicians should not have any interference in, 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 um, in the rule of law. We need to restore our judiciary system. The electoral process needs to be reviewed, refined, corrected. Um, so there's electoral reform in our manifesto. Uh, simple things like making sure that diaspora can vote again. Mm. Um, so all of this is just under accountability. Corruption needs to be completely removed within our country. Uh, the second part of our manifesto focuses on advancement. And that's really mush moving our, our, our country forward, mm -hmm. whether it's the industrial aspect, making sure our economy is stable, our currency needs to be you know, strengthened uh, to where we can use a Zimbabwe dollar again and stop relying on foreign uh, currencies. All of these things are addressed under advancement, uh, making sure land and environment are handled responsibly, mm -hmm. uh, addressing how do we, you know, there's still some unresolved issues with regards to land, for example, but all of these advancements, uh, education, skills training for young people, making sure they get access to jobs, the companies should be working. That's all advancement. Then we move on to dignity. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Zimbabweans, wherever you go, people just say, shame, you are from Zimbabwe. Mm. And we are this nation of people that are pitied. We need to restore our dignity. So that starts with things like our social services, our pensions need to have value. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we rectify any, you know, um, corruption within the system that affects our social services. So you think of the elderly, they are looking after children instead of having their own children living in the country. Mm. Most Anagogo, they are actually now the ones who are starting all over again yeah. raising kids. Uh, so all of these things need to be addressed. And then finally, the stability of our nation. So you mm -hmm. think of the, social, the, the security forces, uh, the issues around our, our transportation system in Zimbabwe. You know, do we have a, a viable and credible, you know, road and rail system that mm -hmm. we can count on? People are dying on the roads every week. Buses are overturning. We need to put an end but, to that. Uh, but the roads are being uh, fixed. Uh, are you noticing that? Really? 
I honestly You've have... You've seen Mtari Road is now perfect. Mlawai Road is now perfect. There has been some progress. Masungo Road as well. Yes, but mm-hmm. have you gone into just any province, you find people are still driving on potholes. I mean, mm-hmm. yesterday we were driving around in Sunningdale. Mm. There are places your car is going to be damaged if you even drive down that strip. So is it being, uh, is it being um, done all along in the last five years? Were we actually addressing it or are we doing uh, facelifts towards elections just to ensure that people see some progress mm. i don't believe that it's being handled properly mm-hmm. i live in a tourism area where from vic falls to wange yeah. the road is complete it's a danger zone mm-hmm. right and there was a, an attempt to start repaving it that contractor i'm told has now stopped work mm. like so is it truly maintenance of the roads we're paying tolls every single day is that money going towards the development and maintenance it's not something the center my head that uh, you know uh, vic falls road is now uh, being repaired this is what I'm saying. It mm. was they started, but mm. then they've stopped now. They've since stopped. Mm. Uh, it's not being completed, and so this is the, 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 our systems are not working consistently mm-hmm. and delivering end results. And there is no part of Zimbabwe where you can go and tell me all the roads are perfect. Mm-hmm. It's, we're, we're a long way away from that. So you know what made you form your own uh, political party uh, and not join uh, the already existing ones? Yeah. It was uh, the people sitting around the table. I had never been in politics before. I've mm-hmm. never been in any political party. So even my knowledge of politics at the time was limited. Mm. Uh, but everyone sitting around the table, many of them were former MDC, former Zanu people. They were like people who had been disappointed by what they had seen in those political parties. Mm-hmm. So they came together and said, we're going to form a new political party that is called Uza. And this is what we are doing, is we're uniting Zimbabwe creating a new government because nothing has really progressed in mm-hmm. almost five decades. So is this like your, your symbol? This is our party symbol. This wow. is what, what, does it mean? what does that mean? Well, we are bringing together, at the time there were two political parties. Oh, yeah, and MDC still, and uh, ZANU-PF. And still in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. we are in a sense saying it's a two-horse race or whatever the, the mm-hmm. thing is, but whatever form or fashion or name or color you bring it, mm-hmm. it's the same people, right? These same two political parties. So we are saying we are bringing them together. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are putting an end to what's there now mm-hmm. as one unit, and that is Zimbabweans. We are beyond all the politics How the are you going to do that? How, how, how are you going to unite um, the opposition and the ruling party? Well, when I'm president, I'm certainly, now that they've given me a serious disadvantage in terms of our MPs, mm. I won't have majority in government. But I will be sure to, to, to um, set the tone for a government whereby people understand their mandate. Mm-hmm. A parliamentarian should be listening to the people. A parliamentarian answers to the people. So for the first time, we will have a government where people understand that their job is not about what they think and what mm-hmm. they want or where they want to go. It's mm-hmm. about listening to the people. The citizens will choose who they want in terms of parliament, but we will lead them as a united government. Look, there is no government where it is composed of one. I mean, in, in Zimbabwe, we will always have multiple political yeah, players. Sure. We have to get to a point of maturity as a country. Mm-hmm. We are now close to five decades, 43 years in the making post-independence. It's time for us to now mature as a country and start looking at the people's needs, the nation's needs, mm-hmm. and it has to come from government. So government needs to learn to work together. Our, our founding values included a mandate to say we want a politically plural Zimbabwe, where all political players come with their ideas mm-hmm. and we choose the best ideas and implement them. Yeah, uh, in an interview you did with the uh, Newsroom Africa, you mentioned that uh, we are not progressing uh, because we have had uh, only male leadership. Uh, hence, we are stagnant. Uh, please elaborate more on this one. I think what I was saying in that is not that males are the reason we're not progressing. We've mm. given men a chance mm-hmm. to lead. <laughs> okay, let's, now it's do, your turn. let's do something different, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think women have uh, been undervalued in our country. Mm-hmm. We don't realize and understand the value a woman can bring. I mean, just in terms of our perspective, we are used to being responsible for our own development, whether it's at the household level. We support the development and progress of our families, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, we nurture, we care. But beyond that, women are also good leaders. We've seen examples of excellent leaders throughout the, country, throughout mm-hmm. the world. But Zimbabwe, if you look at our government composition, is not placing enough value on that. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be equally represented. We're saying let's let's start at the top. As a female <laughs> presidential candidate, mm-hmm. it sets the tone for a very different future for Zimbabwe. In other words, are you saying that uh, having one gender as a leadership is the reason why we are not going anywhere 
uh, as a country? I didn't say that. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. Look, every person comes to the table. One, what's beautiful about humanity mm-hmm. is our diversity. Yeah. But when you can embrace each other's diversity, right? When you can embrace the fact that we are different. Mm-hmm. What I ideas I can bring to the table will be different than the ideas you'll bring. But if we can come together peacefully, you know, with that Ubuntu spirit yeah. and say, let's find a solution and with the right heart, the right intent. All I'm simply saying is right now, Zimbabwe needs something completely different than what we've had because... Yeah, that the, brings the, the, me to the, uh, the next question. That would be, yes. What do you intend to change in Zimbabwe? So the, very, the, the simple fact, for example, that we as a political party, our approach is different. We mm-hmm. are not a, a, an agitation type of political party. We don't agitate. We don't think bringing progress means our people must be uh, agitating. I do not believe in causing harm to our citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to ensure that we approach Zimbabwe's development, for example, with um, a, a people-focused approach. So in other words, it should be all homegrown innovation. When you think of the development that should happen technology-wise, the healthcare sector, let's bring Zimbabweans to the table. Let's have them lead. We're also, as a government, going to be very different from any previous government in Zimbabwe Mm -hmm. in the sense that we don't want to have our hands on everything. We should step out of the picture and Mm -hmm. let the business sector lead the development of the business. Let's make sure that all of our diasporans who are in the health sector or the intellectuals in different aspects of academics, bring them back and and challenge them to reconstruct and rebuild our country, whether it's the academic institutions or the manufacture and development of of products. It should be Zimbabwe-based. So Mm -hmm. we will be a government which delivers Zimbabwean products with pride. Like, and I'm not just talking about increasing the bumper harvest of wheat. I'm saying we should have inventions in our country. Mm-hmm. When's the last time, time you heard of a Zimbabwean inventing something, a device or, or some sort of you know, innovative product that's being sold externally? Mm. We will sell externally. We will, we will export more than we are importing. That's not happening right mm-hmm. now. Zimbabweans will want to stay in Zimbabwe because we'll provide stability. This shifting and changing of policies depending on the weather, whatever it is that uh, that, that triggers them, mm. has to end. People should be able to, to know this is what, you know, we can count on as, mm-hmm. a, as, a, as a society. Yeah. So fiscal policies, you know, all of these things that end up affecting us on a basic, basic and fundamental level. Our reserve bank has to have a banker who actually is concerned about, you know, yeah. banking rather mm-hmm. than, you know, we've got to stop printing money. There's a lot of things that we will do differently. We will, we will not be a, a country riddled with debt. We'll pay our debts and mm-hmm. we will sit at the table and negotiate for debt forgiveness. These are things that a government should be doing if it's responsibly looking at the future of its people. Mm-hmm. Well, what's your take on the president's, uh, you know, a statement? He always say, Nika, you know, I never know you. Yes, Nika, you know, that whole statement mm-hmm. came after Uza started saying, Ngati Batane, Tichiwaka, Zimbabwe. We talked about building Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. And then you heard, you know, Wakwana. So, so ultimately, when you are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, is, that is all well and good. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, if, if you look at the track record of those who are saying this, mm-hmm. are they truly supporting and developing the Zimbabwean citizen, the ordinary person? Um, newspaper. Can they literally say that it's, it's going to be rebuilt and, and developed for our benefit? This mm-hmm. is my concern. This is our concern as Uza. The ordinary person who is right now struggling to even just get clean water pamba, and yet it's a, it's a human right that should be availed to every citizen. You know, these temporary solutions that are false and, and like band-aids that just carry you through a short period of time. Mm. Right now, drill my boreholes. Is that a solution from a government? Shouldn't we be looking at Zinwa and saying what is going on with Zinwa? Why are they failing to deliver on their mandate, their responsibility? These are all things that Zimbabweans. So when you say I, I really am failing to understand how it connects to the ordinary person on the ground. Because mm. that's not the track record. Probably what? because of, uh, you know, uh, what he's doing, uh, the mining sector and everything, saying power to the Zimbabweans. And, n- and probably not looking to uh, looking for other you know, donors and whatnot to come and help us. So tell me, does you know, really is that what, what people are seeing on the street? Makoroko, Zaruku, Aruku, you know, are they, are they thriving? Are their lives improving? Can they really When, when you mentioned about Makoroko, I remember back then it was illegal. 
-hmm. But now they're called the small scale Minus. Minus, yes. But and they, yeah. they're part of a value chain that is not valued. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. We need to do better than that. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that they are actually getting the proper skills training, the support to be able to truly be small scale miners mm -hmm. that have the same ability and capacity to grow to being large scale miners. Why is it that all of the major uh, mining, you know, efforts in our country, despite our wealth as a nation, mm -hmm. have to be through big deals that we don't actually know all the parameters of. When do we get to a point of full transparency? Why is everything so opaque as to what the big mega deals mean for the people? I'm not seeing it translating to the people. My concern is Zimbabwe's citizens and ensuring that they have paramount, um, you know, opportunity and that everyone is treated equally when it comes to these opportunities. And Futi, one more, you mm -hmm. look at who's really benefiting. It's usually through some sort of kinship, kin kinship. It's through some sort of connection. Talk to a normal person who goes into an office in a government office mm. and says, Ruchaka, opportunity, okudai. It's never really that easy to get access. Every person should have equal access in this country. And uh, I was surprised when I heard that uh, you drafted the constitution in 48 hours. Uh, a whole constitution. <laughs> How did you manage to do that? We had a brilliant group sitting mm -hmm. around the table. And it's true, we did in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. We sat as an executive because, of course, after the first, you know, sort of several, like 12 to 16 hours, we had come to the realization that we needed a government. Mm -hmm. And then the discussion was around what do we stand for as a government? Mm -hmm. Of course, we then went through the legal process of trying to make sure the language is refined and all that beyond the first meeting. But we had a fully drafted constitution. And, um, and what is in that constitution? It covers all sorts of aspects of what our party is. Mm -hmm. uh, the structures of our party, we've mm -hmm. got three wings, main wing, youth wing, you know, so the, all of the formalities of how we structure our wings, mm -hmm. um, where and who should be the leaders. Um, in terms of the, the founding values, it describes every aspect of our founding values, what we stand for. This equal opportunity for all, that's an example of something we had clearly articulated mm -hmm. right at the up, up front. Uh, making sure that, um, you know, Zimbabwe, for example, has this politically plural environment. This was part of our initial mandate. So mm -hmm. the founding values, we've got 12 of them and they're clearly laid out. Then we also went into the code of conduct. What do you expect of an UZA member? What is acceptable? What's not? Because we had seen examples yeah. from other parties mm -hmm. of what we don't believe is acceptable. Mm -hmm. I would never allow an UZA member to go out and beat or brutalize a member of another political party mm -hmm. and then still put them on the ballot. We don't stand for that in UZA and we will not tolerate that in UZA. So those are the types of things uh, that we addressed. Disciplinary procedures. When mm -hmm. someone does stray, what do you go through? What's the process to, to deal with that? We have a fully, it's on our website, fully mm. articulated set of rules for how we lead and run our party. And uh, again, in your previous interviews, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, promises that uh, were made after the liberation struggle mm. have not been fulfilled. Uh, which promises are those? Well, look at any of the previous manifestos of ZANU-PF or even C, right, or what used to be MDC. Um, it's not translating into what you see on the ground today, what you see in people's lives today. You know, Zimbabwe should be this thriving, leading, innovative nation. We should be the cream of the crop for Africa, for the world, because we are the, one of the richest countries in, in the world. Mm -hmm. We just don't see that from the delivery of the promises. So when I think of, you know, for example, the, you know, the industrial sector, what happened to our national airline in Zimbabwe? I mean, are we now flying around the world? Are we boasting about the, the tourism that's being brought in by this airline. It's other airlines that are bringing our tourists into the country. Mm -hmm. um, our national railway systems, this goes to, I could you know, keep listing a number of different types of um, failures within Zimbabwe. We don't have a thriving dairy board in Zimbabwe. We don't have a cold storage commission that we can say is functional. And a lot of this is because of corruption, exploitation, lack of delivery of promises. Uh, many Zimbabweans do not have access to what, we, what should be you know, human rights. I'm talking about um, free education, mm -hmm. uh, the health sector, ETC. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your plans you know, concerning the health uh, system? Uh, in public hospitals, um, you know, the services very low yes. in public hospitals yeah. uh, to the extent of a patient sometimes you know losing their life uh, while it's uh, in a queue um even uh as you can see how do you intend, you know, to make sure the services are, are efficient? 
No, you know what, because in Zimbabwe, it's like, is there value to the Zimbabwean person's life? You know, it's just like any, any person you speak to, honestly, and most of the time it's for things that are preventable. It's not okay. We are a nation which is constantly burying our dead. Um, it's something that has become part of our social fabric, but it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. And it does start with, for example, the healthcare sector. I mean, I think it also has other factors. For example, in Zimbabwe, in Harare, I see people are burning plastics every day. Environmental, you know, contamination also affects your health. Then 15 years later, you see someone dies unexpectedly. You don't know why they died. We never get the truth about why and what are the causes. But per healthcare, so I'm, I've got a background in public health and, and science. We want to make sure we go back to, you know, looking at what is the composition of our healthcare sector. Uh, government institutions, government-run hospitals right now don't even have enough, um, you know, labor to support the, the hospitals themselves, let alone you speak of medicines and all the rest of it. So it starts by bolstering our economy first, because as a government, we're going to have to be able to fund these hospitals. If we don't have industry paying taxes, putting towards this, people working, contributing towards the, the financial base of government, we will never really get to a point where we have a, a thriving and vibrant healthcare sector. So there are other things too that contribute to the, towards the healthcare sector. Research and innovation within the academic institutions, figuring out how to make our own medicine. So we sell them and actually make money for a nation mm -hmm. as well as having them available in our hospitals, right? My, my medical devices and things that we use ordinarily in hospital systems, let's create them here in Zimbabwe. It starts by bringing back our scientists, our engineers, but our healthcare uh, professionals, doctors, nurses need to also come back to a stable government that's retaining its wealth, its mm -hmm. income, um, and is not, uh, you know, exploiting it. And so that we can pay the healthcare professionals well. When you have well-paid healthcare professionals, they'll rebuild those, you know, medical institutions to world-class standards. Um, we will make sure that they are run properly, that there are systems of accountability, they're not exploited, there are no corrupt systems within them. Uh, but in addition to that, let's open up the space to private players. You know, mm -hmm. there are people in the healthcare sector, diagnostics and those sorts of things can be done by the private sector. The more you have, the more competition, the lower the prices will be. Right now, if there's only a few players mm -hmm. in the market, they can charge us whatever they want. So you'll go to a doctor and you'll be charged an incredible amount of money for surgery. But if there are plenty of doctors, the prices go down. So it's, it's, it's some basic fundamental things. Yeah. But everyone is winning and everyone's benefiting, right? So we've got a, a very well-articulated um, healthcare policy, mm -hmm. uh, things we'll work on, but we are also going to attract the industry experts, people who are, with, so if it's in healthcare, individuals who have the expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, I will never be a jack of all trades president <laughs> saying I know everything. I mm -hmm. want the best people sitting at the table helping us to rebuild this mm -hmm. country. And in rural areas, you know, you find that uh, hospital or clinics mm -hmm. uh, is um, about 70 kilometers from the village. Sometimes 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers, 10 kilometers, they walk long yes. distance. You know, um, by the time they get to the, uh, the, to the hospital, uh, the person would have you know, died. Yes or something along the way Absolutely. so don't their lives matter as well yeah, it, every person like I said every citizen in Zimbabwe will have mm -hmm. the same value mm -hmm. and the same level of you know access but also accountability so we want everyone I mean it, I talk about it in schools as well the hospitals the clinics should be equally accessible mm -hmm. same standards not to say kuti clinic yoku you know um, wherever in the rural areas, mm -hmm. Marua, it has to be now an impoverished place where in mm -hmm. not we are mm -hmm. hospital, where do we go clinic? Women have to go days ahead to prepare. It, mm -hmm. It's just not supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. They should even have the ambulance facilities to be able to get there when now it's time to come and deliver their baby or if there's an emergency. We had um, you know a loss in our community and it was impossible to even find an, uh, an ambulance to take the body to the mortuary. Like, mm -hmm. this is not how it's supposed to be. People make a plan, they have to arrange their own things. It's not supposed to be like that. In other they countries, they, you know? yeah, in other countries, they give uh, medication for, for free. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do, you know, uh, to make sure that people are getting the medication for free? In Zimbabwe, do you have uh, what, I mean, something in place? Sure. Right now, we have to assess the policies on, you know, access to medication. You know, in Zimbabwe, most of the medicines we get are actually donor provided. They're mm -hmm. provided by the global community. It's not actually provided by the Zimbabwean government. 
Um, so we are very heavily in Zimbabwe right now reliant on donor funded, you know, aid in whether it's healthcare or education or other things. We need to move away from that and have our own capacity to buy our medicines as a government, as a country. Um, we need medical care to be low cost and people should have medical plans if they're working and they should be reliant and, and de reliable and depend de dependable mm -hmm. um, medical care plans. So all of these things are, this is where, like I said, some of the, sometimes you can start looking at the private sector to start bringing those types of solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should not have a scenario where an elderly citizen who has worked their whole life can't even go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. They don't have the money to do it. They should have access. We need to make sure no citizen is left behind and is left to die because of lack of money. And uh, transport is another issue in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that needs to be looked at. Uh, there is a need for um, transport, especially in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. How do you intend to solve that? Well, there needs to be, you know, public transport, mm -hmm. which is reliable, safe, consistent in terms of delivery that's mm -hmm. not being used to go to rallies and other things like we need to have reliable transport that is um, available to our citizens that is government funded right mm -hmm. low cost easy to access um, our rail systems should be relieving some of the busing systems we used to have one of the best rail systems mm -hmm. in the world right but we need to restore that and make it affordable but in addition to that let's not again the private uh, sector has the capacity to start bringing in some of these solutions, whether it's transportation systems. Um, you know, I talked of the the, the air air travel as mm -hmm. well. You know, I I know we've got some private uh, operators now that are mm -hmm. making sure we can get from town to town. Well, let's yeah. make sure we increase that. Uh, but it should be affordable and accessible and safe. Mm -hmm. the safety is of importance. You well. mentioned about um, corruption. Corruption is another you know, issue uh, that is a delayed uh, progress in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. What measures uh, do you have, I mean, what are you going to take um, to, 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 to do away with uh, corruption and uh, corrupt people? Yeah, th we've got already a system in place through the Constitution of Zimbabwe. That's the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Its job is to deal with, you don't need to reinvent the wheel or recreate things. You need to make them work properly. Our institutions are not working and serving the nation as mm -hmm. they should. So we're going to do a thorough audit or, you know, review of the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Why are they not following up on cases? Why are they not prosecuting people when it's known to be a clear case of corruption? We need to make sure the courts are there to back that up, right? So this is where they can't be tampering of the courts in order to ensure Zach to do their job. Mm -hmm. So we simply need to erase um, corruption through the mechanisms that are called for in our constitution. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are such other instances uh, that where, where the security sector can come into play. The police should be monitoring, you know, issues of fraud and such. So let's make sure that these things are being done by the proper authorities. Mm -hmm. The systems are there in Zimbabwe. They're mm -hmm. just not being managed properly. Okay. And uh, citizens are angry, you know, and hungry at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your plans of, uh, you know, eradicating poverty mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe? As, um, as we start to rebuild our industrial sector, as we start to um, ensure that investors' confidence grows in Zimbabwe, as our dollar gets value, there'll be more jobs in Zimbabwe, not outside the borders of Zimbabwe. And mm -hmm. so our citizens will start to be able to count on a regular income, um, being able to know that their, uh, you know, their future is secured through pensions. Mm -hmm. But this all starts by reviving and revitalizing our industrial sector. So as Uza, what we're already doing, we have 30 companies that are in incubation phase. These mm. are companies in different sectors. Wow. We are saying let's build those 30 companies with mm -hmm. Zimbabwean entrepreneurs, whether it's a skincare company which focuses on skincare products, mm -hmm. our own makeup. We're buying yeah. makeup from other countries. Why not make it here mm -hmm. and sell to other countries, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, to simple things like uh, you know detergents and, and such. Uh, but also going as far as trying to come up with our own fuel sources, green energy, biodiesel. Mm -hmm. There are entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe with ideas. We're saying let's channel that mm -hmm. and you know catalyze it. It'll take time to get them fully functional and uh, to where they are full-scale companies. But we've already started building innovation mm -hmm. hubs for that purpose. And uh, we've got uh, you know farmers who are working hard to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, their produce is you know, uh, sells and would also uh, like to as assistance mm -hmm. uh, with seeds, equipments used in the f in the fields, just mm -hmm. uh, so that they get to you know work yes. and their work. Yes. So, um, but now there's a challenge because they lack some they lack. Uh, 
my inputs ni yeah. zimweza gadaro mm. so what are you going to do what are your plans mm. uh, kuma farmers we have seen president uh, the current president you know providing uh, farming equipment sometimes mm. my inputs mbeu ni zimweza gadaro mm. and also he introduced the uh, you know command agriculture what are you going to do Yeah, are you going to, re- to replace that or, yes. or you have other plans as well? Absolutely, but for all Zimbabweans. So as Uza, we always say, I mean, I've had enough of my own members saying, Takuni Mwan Mbeu, because at this way, ku batori. So it should be, this command agriculture is supposed to be for all Zimbabweans, right? But why are we isolating and saying only certain people in our community can have access to certain things? It's not supposed to be like that. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't politicize it. So as Uza, we are saying it's put in place Um, systems of support. So it starts with, again, the research and development innovation. Mm-hmm. We should produce and create our own machinery in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. not wait for donors to come and, you know, use, you, you know, give us what we need. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's been equipment, but I'm not seeing the equivalent development of the agricultural sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to develop and produce our own seed uh, supply. We need to make sure that we are doing our own agro-based research to figure out how to optimize yields and make sure that the farmers are educated on that. So there should be, you know, co-ops and, and educational facilities specifically for the farming sector. The agricultural sector is the heartbeat of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. It was historically the bread basket. So to restore that, we've got to restore confidence in farming for the farmers. They must make money. Um, there are things such as loans and, and uh, access to, to lines of credit mm-hmm. that you know, farmers can and should rely on. But in the past, when these have been given out, the money doesn't go, isn't repaid. Part of it is because of the follow through and the way that funds are distributed. Mm-hmm. So we will work on ensuring that there is a cohesive system that covers every country, every uh, province. And remember that in Zimbabwe, every province has different needs. So mm-hmm. they will be specialized and they will be focused on each province. They'll be led from the provincial level mm-hmm. rather than centralized. Okay. So that if you are in Manika land, you've got a plan for Manika land's agricultural sector, which will be very different than what we are doing in Mat North. Mm-hmm. Um, so these would be you know, led by the farmers, led by the, 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 the um, technocrats mm-hmm. in that space. Uh, and ultimately, we want to make sure that it's a thriving and robust plan for mm-hmm. development. And uh, I mean, um, I, I like the quote, uh, education is the key to success. Mm-hmm. However, Are there children who have been, you know, deprived of it due to lack of funds, yet we preach empowerment, uh, you know, at the young ones? How do they get empowered without education or, I mean, when they experience fees hikes yes. and no money um, at all to fund their studies? Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, in an ideal world, you should be able to go all the way through to university level without being concerned about school fees, right? Um, but again, it goes back to our income levels within Zimbabwe. People are struggling, barely making ends meet. And so they can't afford to pay the school fees. Mm-hmm. So what we as Uza are saying is every child should have the same start in life. We will provide free education for primary school mm-hmm. from day one. We need to make sure that our schools no longer require people to struggle. How we, are we going to be you know, funding the, the primary education to, fund, to be funding the, you know, uh, the education center so that these, one, these young ones can go for free? Remember again that it's all about making sure that the resources in our country are directed to the right places. Mm-hmm. So if it means less cars following us around or less trips overseas with private jets, let's use that money for our school system mm-hmm. because that's not where we should be putting our resources is like on these, you know, extravagant expenditures for government leaders. We need to make sure we are putting money towards education, mm-hmm. towards hospitals, towards all of these things for the people. Mm-hmm. So That alone will cover our entire nation. I think there are certain outspoken people who've spoken about how, you know, some of these ex- elaborate trips could co- pay for an entire hospital to be redesigned, redeveloped and equipped. Let's start putting our money in the right places. That's all it really comes down to. Mm. So from an educational standpoint, we need to bring back our teachers. Teachers are not being paid well. That's why they're running away from Zimbabwe. We need to create environments whereby every school doesn't... Right now they're being paid in U.S., This, they're not. They were a COVID allowance as well. They're not making enough money. In if you really look at the cost of living, the mm. factors involved to incentivize them to stay in the classroom, they're saying I make more money doing private lessons for my for for children outside of class because they're still trying to supplement their money. Mm. Um, we need to get to a point where you are well paid to where you don't want to do side jobs. You know, this whole thing of us hustling to make other things happen needs to come to an end. So we, it starts with our. 
our um, civil service. Let's make sure they're paid enough to do their jobs and focus on it, but not bloated, right? We don't need excess people like in excess. Let's have an efficient system mm -hmm. whereby we have, you know, a workforce that is paid well and, and is um, distributed well throughout our country. Every school should have equivalent standards when it comes to the classroom. Uh, we need to make sure that children in the rural areas are learning at the same standards as our children in the suburbs. Uh, but it also... Again, that brings me to the uh, new curriculum. Um, mm. What's your take on that one, uh, new curriculum? It you know, people in uh, rural area, areas, some, they don't have access to the Wi-Fi, mm. uh, internet, mm. and then compared to those in Harare for their research purposes. So what's your take on that? So this is the point. You can't say we're introducing a sophisticated curriculum and you don't have the, the laboratories, the electricity in the classroom, the water to do the experiments that are needed to be done. Um, I, I think it's it's... From the feedback, again, we all we work off of citizens' engagement. The feedback has been that it's burdensome. It's beyond what uh, you know any parent or, or child should be exposed to. But I think a review needs to be done. We need to bring the academics to the table, mm -hmm. have them look at are we effectively approaching our, our curriculum in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it too, that what concerns me the most is that it doesn't create an, a level playing field for every child in terms of their learning. Mm. In the rural under-resourced areas, I'm seeing teachers just focusing on quizzing children how to pass the test. They're not getting the actual learnings and mm -hmm. the actual curriculum. Mm. So we need to look at on the surface, are we trying to make up and pretend that it's a good curriculum, yet the actual work and delivery in the classroom is not equivalent? I would like to believe that uh, the youth is the, is the future. 100%. Yeah. What do you, I mean, have planned for, for them, for the, for, the, for the youth? Well, Zimbabwe, you know, has a very, um, we have incredible youth with amazing talent and potential, mm. but they are just viewed as that, the youth. They are people who are exploited. Oftentimes they are put at the forefront when it comes time to politicize things, but we are not actually capacitating our youth empowering them truly in terms of giving them leadership capacity. So as Uza, we're committed to making sure we put lead, uh, young leaders forward. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at even our, our construct in terms of our leadership, we have youth leadership at the executive level mm -hmm. and provincial wise, we make sure youth are represented. So they should be decision makers. And if you have youth, just like women, right? Mm -hmm. If women are at the table, we can represent the needs of the women. The youth should be shaping their own agenda as having a voice that's strong enough to be able to to impact policies. So we want a government that has is youth inclusive uh, so that policies from the governmental level right up, up front are, are already addressing the needs within communities. Whether it's looking at our academic institutions, what is it that we need to do to improve the outcome of uh, the, you know, the, the, re the schooling mm -hmm. that they're getting? Um, capacitating them to lead industry. Like, why aren't we having more and more youth entrepreneurs? We've got innovative people in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. and they are brilliant people, yeah. right? But you don't see that many success stories with youth leaders, you know, who are business leaders and that sort of thing. So we want to see that, those success stories. Mm -hmm. uh, but more than, more imp most importantly, is letting them have their own ability to carve the way because they know what they want. Yeah, they yeah. know what they need, but we don't want youth on drugs. We don't want youth being exploited, young girls being married at the age of, you know, mm -hmm. 10, 12. Yeah, sure. Being impregnated, being utilized mm -hmm. as, as, you know, as tools. We yeah. want youth that are valued and equ equally viewed as any other citizen. And uh, you know what, Madame Valerio, uh, most politicians politicians uh, are good at talking, making promises to the citizens, mm -hmm. but don't walk the talk. Yes. So in your case, how different are you from other contestants? Uh, why should the citizens vote for you? I've been saying all along I'm the most qualified because I am the one of the few people who can speak with confidence as a presidential candidate saying I've done what I'm saying. Uh, in, I, in my region, I implemented a a, a regional STEM program where we introduced STEM in the classroom before government even brought it into government into into the programming. And my concern at that point was to make sure our young people were getting a well-rounded educational experience. Why is yes today? Are, are you saying you're the one who introduced the STEM? I brought STEM into Zimbabwe. I say that with confidence because I showed a, pre a report <laughs> to Jonathan Moyo and he ran with it the next week it was in government. Really? And he was very impressed. He will never probably admit it. But I, he came to Wange. Uh -huh. I sat and talked about the STEM program we were doing in Wange. We've got secondary schools. We were teaching teachers how to teach STEM subjects. Mm. And it was because I saw 
that kids were not studying biology, chemistry, physics. They were really not under, even understanding the value of those mm. subjects mm. and how it ties into the workforce and the, the industrial you know, development of a nation. They didn't mm -hmm. understand. There was a disconnect. So we had workshops teaching teachers how to <laughs> teach STEM. And I showed this whole report on what we were doing as a tourism operator. I'm uh, seeding back into my community. Mm -hmm. And big eyes everyone was like wow this is amazing yeah. well done and i was so surprised next week it was on the news zimbabwe is introducing a stem program <laughs> so like stem is a thing that's been around right Science, so i i i i i say i you saying professor jonathan moyo uh, stole your idea i don't think he stole anything i'm not going to call him a, a thief mm -hmm. right but i'm going to say he took an idea and ran with it mm -hmm. and he must have then appreciated the fact that this was something i he will never like i said pro i've never had a conversation with him since that day mm -hmm. but he'll probably never admit it stem hasn't has been around like mm -hmm. science technology engineering and math has been around i've mm -hmm. been working on international stem programs mm -hmm. for more than 20 years um, I, i also run a program for graduate students and postdoctoral students like mm. phds and engineers yeah. which is all stem based it's all about getting engineers to understand their value the role they play um, so i've been in this sector in this space for a long time mm -hmm. when i came to zimbabwe there was not enough stem mm -hmm. and so yes i planted a seed that government ran with and i'm happy and proud that Zimbabwe finally acknowledged STEM, but I'm not seeing the implementation. Mm -hmm. And that's where my concern is. We still haven't done it. So your question about why, you know, what have I done? Will yes. I walk the talk? Yes. That was just a small program in my own region. Imagine if we're given the opportunity to lead Zimbabwe, what we can do. But beyond that, I've also uh, worked within communities. We've worked on rebuilding schools. Mm -hmm. I've brought, um, you know, dignity to some of our schools yeah. that didn't even have toilets you know mm. girls were sitting at home saying i can't go to school because of my my monthly experience yeah. and, and so we brought water to some of our schools mm -hmm. um i've invested in the tourism sector i'm the chair of the tourism um, association in my region so mm -hmm. i'm someone who's actually doing things and like i said 30 companies are in development today yeah. um i do walk, i walk the talk i don't <laughs> just talk i don't have time to just talk i have to focus on solutions yeah so are you not saying this in order to just gain you know votes and uh, then let a change uh, once you win the elections in the event that you do that's the typical role of a politician i'm not your typical politician mm -hmm. i could be sitting enjoying my lifestyle right now where i am things are actually quite nice mm -hmm. but i'm doing this because i'm concerned about where we are going as a country mm -hmm. zimbabwe listen to me closely uh, you know dj ola this is a very serious thing in mm -hmm. five years If we continue at the level of exploitation that we have today, yeah, yeah. Apasisina Zimbabwe ngatinde, we are going to go back to a situation where we are almost colonized again. Mm -hmm. Because now Zimbabweans actually are not the focus of where we are going. And that is my concern. Saga ininika pandaga gara panapa. I'm saying because I want to make sure and I've got I've had everything in my life. I'm mm -hmm. old enough to have experienced enough. Mm -hmm. It's not about me anymore. It's yeah. about the future children that are going to grow up in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. saying we used to be. We used to be. And as Africa like the continent, we have so much to offer. Zimbabwe is the cream of the crop when it comes to Africa. But we are not seeing that on the ground. It's not okay. Yeah, for the short period uh, that you have been in politics, how do we know you will deliver? what you've promised to the citizens already within the work that we've done uh, it's I, i think most people looking at uza mm -hmm. coming to this election we were just a name there's a person coming up as a presidential candidate but mm -hmm. if you look at what we've been able to already deliver we've built a government in waiting we have structures throughout this country mm -hmm. some of these parties that are saying they've been around for 20 30 years they're barely still keeping their structures organized we are united as uza we are you know working as one um, so we've already successfully managed to to you know to to cover this whole country engage citizens writing a manifesto mm -hmm. uh, where some of these big political parties are saying look at our work on the street mm -hmm. we've got a written document that says this is what we're working on uh, but not only that already we have projects throughout Zimbabwe mm -hmm. as I said we are investing in the development of our nation people say to me okay if you don't win what happens we'll carry on with the work we are doing mm. we're that serious about building our country so no matter what happens Zimbabwe has a choice we build mm -hmm. Zimbabwe together or we will continue to build But we won't progress as fast because the mandate of government is to make sure that the, the nation progresses. Mm. So ultimately, 
I'm not your ordinary politician. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and by the way, uh-huh. I don't want to be around forever. Yeah. I won't grow old in office. Mm-hmm. I'm paving the way for future leaders of this nation. Give me a chance. How many terms would you take up? I've already said to my leadership, two is the maximum. And, you know, ultimately, if a better leader comes along in five years, let them lead. I'm mm-hmm. not looking to become, it's not about power or politics for me. It's mm-hmm. about our country. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. Uh, do you understand the pressure that comes with the, the role of, a, of being a leader? You know, I mean, it's different from uh, uh, running a business or something like that. Um, it's not a child's play. I'm leading a political party right now that is the third largest political party in Zimbabwe. It's mm-hmm. like we have a segment of government already. Just we are in waiting, like mm-hmm. a shadow government. I know the pressures of what has come along with running Uza because we have members in every province. We have you know, work that we want to deliver on the ground in every single province. Mm-hmm. Going into office is going to be no different than that, except that I'll be better capacitated because now we have you know, government institutions to do the work that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm fully ready. I know it's not like running a business. I don't mm-hmm. expect to compare it to that at all. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's leading a nation. But leadership is not about what that one person does. It's about how they leverage the mm-hmm. other leaders and bringing the right leaders to the table. And that's my job, yeah. is to bring masterfully the best people. And it may even require us working with people who come from different you know, political outlooks in order to make sure we have one united and functional government. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is what my biggest challenge is going to be the next several weeks, is to figure out how to pave the way to that new functional government. And uh, in the event that you lose the elections, Mm -hmm. what's next? The next election is next. (laughs) Uza continues to build and grow. We have so many members and Mm -hmm. many, many more trying to join our party. We're growing faster than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. So we lose the election. We keep engaging the citizens because that's who we are here to serve. Mm -hmm. Uh, We will will work with them in the provinces, in the constituencies to make sure that we're progressing with our agenda. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll continue to enlighten Zimbabweans on the role they play in terms of choosing their government, voters' education, but also tangible projects and and activities on the ground. So beyond 23rd of August, if Mm -hmm. I'm not in government, if I'm not the president of Zimbabwe, regardless, I'm committed to our nation. (laughs) The UZA continues to to grow and thrive and and we will just be even better equipped in 2028. We'll Mm -hmm. be an unstoppable force. But I've never seen you, you know, uh, doing these uh, rallies. Are you? Are you doing any... Uh, rallies? This is again why Uza is different. We're mm-hmm. not, uh, if I go to a rally and I meet people for two hours, I don't get to speak with the citizens. Mm. We are citizens driven. Citizens engagement is what we focus on. So yesterday I was driving through Harare, meeting people in mm-hmm. their own communities where they live, engaging with citizens. We don't copy or mimic anyone else. We have our own road that we're walking on towards. But remember, the, it's just a few days before the elections. Yes. So how are you going to, you know, uh, visit every community in the next few days that's left? Cinema structures, ka. Cinema structures, like my leaders, there. We've got candidates in sixty-one constituencies mm-hmm. right now on the ballot. The ones that were allowed to contest. Six so 61 constituencies. Mm-hmm. Um, we had prepared for many more, but many were rejected, just like myself. Mm-hmm. So my candidates, Varukuto Mobilizer, we've got Mota, mo, province, like all provinces, Zinemota. We've got my mobilization teams. They're working already. Mm-hmm. I will go where I can in the next 20 plus days, mm-hmm. but I also have to look at the big picture for the party and make sure we're well positioned for that election. So, Ndrukwenda Kwandino Gona, but uh, we've had my rallies. Mm-hmm. People, you know, the thing is, Isusuka, we've been Kuma, Kuma rural areas mostly. We yeah. are only now emerging from my, my towns and urban areas, mm-hmm. but we have been sowing seeds. We are, but we are do well you think now um, the, the, the brand or the name Uza right now because we, we just, you know, a few days to the election. Sure, and, and that is my biggest concern because mm-hmm. we are newer. And we've not had the time, like we haven't had decades to get there. We have to reach every citizen in this short period of time. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. I think what many people want is to meet me as the president. Kuti, yeah. you know, is this the person that mm-hmm. we want for Zimbabwe? And that's the biggest 
deficit. I may not be able to meet every person. Mm-hmm. But in terms of um, the party itself, people have embraced our outlook, our, our, you know, our manifesto, the approach that we have as a new political party. And people are starting to realize mm-hmm. we actually are the third largest political party. As a party, we've managed to deliver more women than any other political party in Zimbabwe. You're third after what? Well, there are, there are only two parties, right? So we are the third strongest positioned. When you look at my ballot uh, mm-hmm. candidates on the ballot, we are the third in place in mm-hmm. terms of representation. Okay. Preparing for this election. Mm. Mm. And uh, how are you funding the party? That's the big, biggest question. Sure. Yeah. Zimbabweans, we've got my um, membership programs, like mm-hmm. so people can join as a member. We need funding, of course, and yeah. it's, it's all citizens driven. Uh, whatever level of, of contribution people can make, they support the party, and that helps us. To to do all the different things like tine mm-hmm. head office yelu tine my full time secretariat tine you know my programs at nuita all of that is funded by zimbabwean citizens mm-hmm. we are only fully funded by zimbabwean people were shocked when you um you managed to pay the 20000 us dollars um you know in full yes so um, you say people are contributing so you say so are, are you saying people were contributing towards this or maybe you used your own money from your own pocket on the twenty thousand dollars i paid it I'm, mm-hmm. i've got businesses i i do have resources of my mm-hmm. own so i contributed that to the party mm-hmm. uh, by supporting the membership fee mm-hmm. but ultimately zimbabweans are the ones that are helping us to within the provinces to carry out the work that they are doing mm-hmm. wow that's uh that's interesting and <laughs> Have you ever met um, the president, uh, Emma Solomonangagwa? Not in my life. I've never had any sort of interaction with him. Mm-hmm. But uh, are, you, are you maybe planning to meet the president anytime soon? Even before the election? I, um, it, the, that has not been on my agenda at all, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Uh, there are a lot of people I need to meet in Zimbabwe to vote for me. So mm-hmm. it's really not been something that I've, I've been looking into. I know there are a lot of things before the election that have yeah. been planned for, you know, political parties to sit down and mm-hmm. talk to each other. You know. yes. So at some point, maybe there might be a forum, but that has not been my agenda at all. And maybe the and opposition leader, uh, Nelson Chamisa? Chamisa, I've never met either. Um, I, I, I take that back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe to correct myself, uh, Nelson Chamisa was at my mother's funeral. Mm. So was Morgan Changirai. Mm-hmm. So we met, but don't. I didn't know who he was. He mm-hmm. didn't even. You know, we didn't talk to each other. That's mm-hmm. probably the only time we've been in the same space. But don't you think maybe you need to meet some of these your know, political leaders uh, have, before the elections? Sure, I have nothing to discuss with Zanu PF in terms of you know trying to figure out a way forward mm-hmm. because we're trying to replace Zanu PF. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to Chamisa, I think it's important for, for political opposition parties to work together to try to pave the way. Mm-hmm. I think I'd love to talk to Nelson Chamisa because we get attacked more by Triple C than any other political party. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Um, I'm told we are using yellow colored t-shirts, mm-hmm. but we had yellow colored t-shirts before there was a Triple C. Mm-hmm. So these little things. But ultimately, we've got policy issues to talk about. What happens you know, after this election, if perhaps there's a runoff, what do we do to make sure we strengthen opposition's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, position ahead of this election? Yeah. We should be talking. I will say that a few of the other political party leaders have reached out and called and introduced themselves to me. And mm-hmm. we are getting some interest from a lot of the independent candidates mm-hmm. who are saying, oh, we didn't have a home before. Now we see Uza. Mm-hmm. It's better aligned with what we want to do. So we are having conversations with a lot of people. Um, as Uza, we're not opposed to speaking to anyone Mm -hmm. but we know where we stand Um, example uh, a lot of people bring up is yes as Uza we took a stand as an executive directorate that will never join Polad we just don't see any benefit of the uh, sort of the, the grouping. It's not uh, anything that has been productive and, mm-hmm. and it seems that there are an agenda, there's an agenda to it. So for us, we see no value in it. We will not join Polad. So that's on record as our executives have decided. Um, Let's say you lose the elections. Yes. And you've got some brilliant ideas. Some of those you were mentioning here. Yes. Um, what are you going to do with those ideas? Are you going to keep them? They're for Zimbabwe. They're, they're, the ideas are not mine. They're mm-hmm. from Zimbabwe for Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Um, so whatever forum or platform we have to be able to share and expand this, the, the, progress, the progress of this country, mm-hmm. we will engage. We are here to you know, develop our Zimbabwe. What we will not stand for is uh, aligning with anyone that's exploiting Zimbabweans. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's sort of where we draw the line is if, if there is sort of the agenda for self em- self enrichment or exploitation of our country our resources uh, we cannot engage mm-hmm. 
Okay, uh, that's uh, that's great. And uh, you, I, I've heard that you you spent much of your time in um, in America, and yeah. now back in Zimbabwe. Are you in Zimbabwe full time now, or we are in Zimbabwe for uh, this political season only? <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I wake up there every day. You know, it's it's my home. Mm-hmm. I used to live in America for a period of time because I went to university there mm-hmm. and I got my first job working as a scientist in America mm-hmm. um, and certainly spent a few years there. But I moved back here in 2011 mm-hmm. full time. I've been living here on a full-time basis. Mm. Um, my community knows me very well. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. This is home. This is and home. Your, your parting remarks, ma'am? I just, I think I, I just want to re-emphasize the importance of this election. Mm-hmm. As you look ahead, a lot of people maybe are looking at this with interest and they're trying to figure out what will be the most exciting political party yeah. going forward. It's not about that. It's about our country. It's about mm-hmm. those children that are growing up in your mm-hmm. home. It's about um, the educational system. It's These are the factors that will be affected by the decision made on August 23rd. Mm-hmm. So my parting words are just to remind Zimbabweans that one waka fira this opportunity. People gave up their lives. They died for us to be able to vote, to choose and decide what we want as a nation. Every citizen has a vote. Some didn't go and register to vote. Mm-hmm. Sadly, they don't have the opportunity to influence this election. But waka register, waka no vote. The people who have registered must go to the polls in numbers mm-hmm. and they must choose. As the United Zimbabwe Alliance, we're bringing a very different future for Zimbabwe. Um, I know that this is something people have been yearning for and they are hoping that it like in 2017, you know, we all hoped that there would be a change, a transition, mm-hmm. but it was more of the same. So please, I'm asking Zimbabweans just to open their eyes. Realize, are you not seeing uh, you know, results or anything? I don't see it. Positive? I, I go based on what people tell me mm-hmm. with all of the conversations and I've had tens of thousands of conversations but you know people just attack sometimes but maybe when yes, you go on true. the ground mm-hmm. um for yourself and see what you know is yes. being done i've seen the life compared to what was you know being done in the past i've seen the life people are living in zimbabwe it's mm-hmm. not getting better it's not improving Whatever is happening, again, it's all superficial and surface but the people's lives are not improving mm. if anything it's getting worse it's getting much worse wow Thank you so much, uh, Madam Valerio. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we can't wait for the 23rd of uh, August and see what happens. <laughs> that was uh, Madam Valerio Wadagatinoba per program exclusives with All Our Seven. Thank you so much for watching. From the time that you have been in the music uh, space, what have you learned? <laughs> Or oh, maybe you should be appointed the brand ambassador for some tissue company, I think. It's my job to fix me. Mm-hmm. It's your job to fix you. <laughs> my job to me that you you done it on our and I have to me. According to the word of God, Shogramari not Dimari or no god Zamazimam. Oland Nanasi crash young and destroy now crash now. Now what young? Eh, but you are gonna phone a man to get to Manangu Bokura. As soon as I can batter.